All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And the time has come for us to have that very, very important uh, conversation via Skype. Yes, I said it's very important because uh, it involves content creators. A lot of us, we do content. Uh, yes, there's a lot of things that are, you know, connected to that. And there's a tax, content tax. So we'd like to look into that one. And there's a person who is an expert who can give us uh, the necessary information regarding and the things that it entails. So I'm going to be speaking to Isioma and Nena Alexis Idibe. And uh, she is a legal practitioner. Welcome to the Good Morning Ninja Show. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. All right. Uh, it's, it's a tradition on the show. I always get to ask my guests how they're doing honestly because I know that there's a pandemic. A lot of things have changed. Unexpected things happened. So honestly, how are you honestly? Well, I mean, I'm fine. Hmm. Of course, it hasn't been um, in the and um, because I tried the um, media and entertainment law, yeah, all of the clients were affected, and all my clients are still being affected hmm. um, because it came out at the open. Um, but general, um, from home because, because my firm is tech. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we said I was active, so it has been bad. Okay, great stuff, great stuff. I like the fact that uh, even if with the situation happening, you're looking for ways to make it happen, but it's all good. So today we're talking about uh, content tax, and a lot of people hear them like, what's that? What does that even mean? So let's start from there. What does it entail so that they can have like a, a clear knowledge of what content tax is about? I mean, the first thing I want to say, all of us really know about because the information that they very, it's very little information. Mm. So we're not exactly of what, but what this is a tax, whether it's a levy, you know, all we know with first case, film and video sensor is now that all film and videos that produce first case mm -hmm. are that them and be charging out if they're levy on mm -hmm. all content. Mm -hmm. A 5% levy on all content produced, yes. produced here produced locally. Today. In okay, so um, we know that this stirred up a lot of conversations. People were not in support of this, and they're like, "How can you tell me who uh, have gone to produce all by myself, put everything, put all the work in it, and you expect me to now pay a certain uh, fee, uh, five percent fee on my content?" So as it is. Um, how does it affect the average content uh, creator? How does this affect the average content creator? I mean, the, the first thing we need to look at the history between government and the industry, number mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. standing of film and video sensors yeah. to even regulate production and distribution of man in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And, and you see that this kind of action is a result a history of poor research industry. Mm. Um, so when you pass our, our constitution, you find out that the regulation of distribution and of film and video was on the current basis. Which means that and federal have the power to regulate these activities. Mm -hmm. And so that is the thing on which state film and video has now brought regulation. Now they, I know that it went out, mm -hmm. felt that they first state film and video sectors board. Mm -hmm. Such doesn't have the right to regulate this sector. In it. It's odd it, because this activity is based on concurrent. So the state don't have power. 
Okay. So what should we think with this regulation? All right. Um, so, sorry, Edwama. Uh, hello, Edwama. I would like you to uh, give me a minute because the audio is really bad. It's uh, cutting, oh. and you know, so we'd probably like to call you back and uh, see if we can reconnect a bit better so that uh, we don't lose out in some words you're saying. All right? Okay. Okay, so we'll do that in a minute, and we'll, we'll call you back immediately. Okay, so uh, we're having a conversation with uh, Isioma and then uh, Alexis, and we're going to be talking, we're talking about content tax. Because uh, it's a situation that uh, content creators are coming out to talk about, seeing the fact that there's a 5% fee that's uh, required of uh, every content creator in Lagos, uh, you know, for your movies, whatever you're creating, to be paid. And it's like a levy or a tax. So we're looking at that, uh, having that conversation regarding how it affects the regular content creator. So uh, let's see if we can reconnect back to her in a minute. Uh, we can get that conversation going. Are we back? Yes, I believe. Okay. Oh. So. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Where are you? Yeah. Go ahead. How? Yeah. You were telling us how it affects uh, the common uh, content content creator, the regular con the average content creator. So, so, relation. There's uh, a tax from the states called payment tax, mm -hmm. which technically existed for. Of judgment that was passed in Echo Hotel when it took the tax agents um, to court, which essentially said you added tax B was covering the food. and therefore the payment tax and to tax essentially taxing people twice. But still, the cinemas are entertainment tax. Mm -hmm. Which they deduct from revenues that the filmmaker earn um, as a result of, of their film, yeah, name in the cinemas. In the cinemas, okay. And you, if you look at the picture, for instance, so you look at TV channels, TV channels, TV star signs, and all, mm -hmm. all those are all there. So all run is maybe not as government or but private company are all run by who are paying tax, mm -hmm. who are taking the holding tax from the Nigerian producer which they whom they are uh, or or commit on to create content for mm -hmm. so adding this on top is like adding layer of, of tax. You know again we don't know what this but I'm not sure if this is a tax, right? Mm -hmm. There's a document that says that LNVC don't have the power to take this. Yeah. And the constitution says that the regulation of that is on the concurrent list. So you can see there's also but at the end of the day, five that are losing. Mm -hmm. They are taking five percent here, five percent here, five or ten percent here. And this is an industry that needs support people. Yeah. Doesn't need to it's be paying to extra pay extra for, monies, yeah. What it needs to what needs to be done is that mm -hmm. it needs to be proper tax. Is that everything consolidated? What the agencies need to be themselves. The producers because and the individuals need to be identified mm -hmm. and properly taxed. What additional tax being mm -hmm. imputed to a sector? That is growing and needs to be protected by the government. You know, but but lo looking at the the argument from the government's perspective is that they they have um, this would pay off in the long run, seeing the fact that they want to getting these taxes are uh, also to you know to help boost that industry or boost the industries in a way. So in the long run, do you think this would be favorable to the producers in any way? Again, this is. It's just this is problematic. I am government. A lot of people don't. There's something called the court. Mm -hmm. Now it's it 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 actually be designed. Actually, the regulation that we have. What does this mean? It charges a tip on any item that has the to copy material. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. For example, mobile phone, laptop, iPad. If it's imported or produced mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. there will be a the charge top of it. Mm -hmm. And this money is not being collected. Thanks to the company for mm -hmm. who is now meant to distribute who is meant to distribute to copyright owner yeah. and the same film producers, by the way, mm -hmm. via that management organization. So there is already a structure for retribution that is not effective. And all we need is to implement slavery. Identify producers of tax them properly mm -hmm. and fix the collective management system so that when when we implement copyright, it will then be properly distributed to the rights owners through their collective management of protection. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying that deal with this regulation. Are people who don't understand that in at all. And you have so many agencies trying to do things and causing more problems. Hmm. I've been told that there are discussions tomorrow about this AD or yeah. tax or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And I hope that the that agents will be elected to to what to what landscape we see mm -hmm. so that they can all get together and, and jointly friend. And overregulate and suffocate producers who are really in a hostile economic environment. Hmm. Okay. All right, uh, we're, going to t we're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, we're still going to be having this conversation. And uh, I believe I still have a couple of questions to ask regarding this because, yes, a lot of producers are really, really not in support of this. But we're still going to talk about that. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're still going to be talking about this. My people, Luna, good, do, good do morning. My name is Ali Baba. I see, make I just wake up this morning, make I greet you. As on a day this morning, so may God they bless you. On a bangago, right? As it be so, on a no go use leg, knock stone, wing go cause on a wahala. The stone will go kick, na the one wing go make on a get better money. You know, say them talk, say if you use right leg, kick something, better they happen. On a left leg, no go hit, waiting go make on a disturb on herself. And I do greet you now. On a well done. Now they watch this good, do, good, do morning show. May God bless all of you now and on a banga go right past our talk. Now, leave a basket make I greet you now. So, carry go.
All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. We still get our conversation going on. We're talking about content tax with a very, very important personality who really give us the breakdown on what it's all about and uh, the situations around that. For all you content creators, uh, that, that this uh, new uh, law, this tax uh, um, situation has come up, uh, the conversations has been very, very, very much uh, about it. And we've been talking to Ishoma Nena Alexis Idibe, and she's a legal practitioner. I've been talking about how this comes about and what it's really all about, what contact tax is about, and how uh, it, we seem our producers need to go about it. So I believe she's back with me on the show this morning. I need Hello. To, I need to be able to hear. Okay, are you back? Yes, I'm back, but you sound a bit faint. Okay, now can you hear me clearly now? How, yes, it's how much I, better. I'm, okay, it's better. All right. So uh, we were, we've, earlier we were talking about how this is, to, uh, if it's a good move in the long run, and you were giving us a breakdown on how the government would have gone about it. So because of the audio was really not too clear, can you help us uh, run through that again? Okay. Yeah. So you were saying, I, I recall that you were saying that were one of the arguments, and I had read this as well yeah. when this issue came up, is that the money would um, eventually be redistributed by the government mm -hmm. back to the sector. Mm -hmm. And my response to that is, well, there is already a structure in place for that to happen through the collective management system okay. and the Nigerian Copyright Commission by virtue of implementing what, what is called the copyright levy, mm -hmm. which is a levy that is charged on goods that are either imported or produced in Nigeria mm -hmm. that have the capacity to, copy, to, to reproduce copyright material. So, for example, your mobile phone, your computer, your iPad, mm -hmm. you know, those types of items would have a levy of between 1% to 3% charged on them at the point of creation or importation yeah. into the country. And then the, this money is collected and managed by the Nigerian Copyright Commission, who then distributes the monies to the various collective management organizations in the country who mm -hmm. now redistribute those monies to their members. For those who don't know what collective management organizations are, I know there has always been a lot of news about something called COSON mm -hmm. yes. or MCSS. Yes. And these are the collective management organizations for music. So essentially what these bodies do is that they are not non-profit but profit making, how I put it, they are non profit organizations that conduct business and really the business that they do is the issuance of licenses and collection of royalties for their members yeah. who own copyright. So it can be music, it can be like related rights like performance rights for actors, mm -hmm. you know, it can be even even producers of films as well get are supposed to get royalties from for instance, communication to the public. So when I say communication to the public, if a content screen on Wazobia Max, for mm -hmm. instance, um, that is considered a communication to the public because yeah. Wazobia Max is a public station. And so there's supposed to be money. Um, so Wazobia should have a license from COSON or MCSN, for instance, to be even though they've, they've done a, an, a, an acquisition already, they're still supposed to pay a license, for instance, for the music, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. And it, there have been a series of cases um, in the Nigerian courts where the courts have ruled that, yes, these, these licenses are meant to be paid. And if you look at the Copyright Act, it, it talks about, you know, payment when it comes to music um, and some other copyrights. There needed to be an additional payment by the broadcaster. So, so you can see that they are already within our current laws, mm -hmm. there's already a mechanism for collection of levy where the onus is not on the person who is producing the work, but actually the person who is consuming the work. And there's already an infrastructure for that money to flow back to the content creators. Mm. But this infrastructure has not been implemented when we're talking about the copyright levy. And the collective management system is fraught with all sorts of issues and is largely ineffective and needs to be fixed. I just completed a study a few weeks ago, yeah. a diagnostic study on the collective management system, which was commissioned by the Nigerian Copyright Commission, you know, 
and funded by the French Development Agency. Mm -hmm. And hopefully when this report is published, it contains key steps that need to be taken to restructure and make this collective management system effective mm -hmm. so that creators can earn, you know. Yeah. And the NCC is very enthusiastic and key to implement this copyright levy and take some of the steps we have recommended to get that system up and running. There's absolutely no need for this additional levy. Hmm. You know, there's absolutely no, it doesn't it doesn't do anyone any good, and it is a reflection of what we see in the creative industry, where the intentions may be good, but there is no fundamental understanding of the landscape. Mm -hmm. The people who are then put in these positions to regulate this sector don't invest in actually researching and understanding the landscape and the various agencies that are mandated that have regulatory rules within the sector yeah. are all working in isolation as opposed to working together, together to yeah. make sure that they are creating an enabling environment for the for, for filmmakers and the film and television industry in Nigeria and not suffocating the sector with double taxation and over-regulation. Now, looking at, at that, at it's, thank you very much for giving us a clear analysis on uh, what this is all about so that people can understand that, yes, the, the conversation, I, I statement I made earlier, seeing the fact that maybe uh, from the path of the government, this is a, a move to create more revenue for the industry. And you've clearly stated that there are different ways this has always been done. And uh, we're introducing, introducing a new um, way of collecting more taxes is really not relevant at this point. But so in a, in, let me in, just add, let me correct yes, that. Yes. It's not that, first of all, filmmakers have been paying tax. Yeah. Even a tax that they shouldn't be paying, the entertainment tax. So that, there is that. Filmmakers have companies. Distribution, distributors have companies that are paying corporate tax. Mm -hmm. So this, this is an industry that is already taxing. Is it, is it paying all the taxes you should be taxed? But it is not in the sense that uh, do all the production companies have you know, registered uh, entities that have tax ID and all of that. Mm -hmm. No. So that needs to be done. You understand what I mean? But yes. there is an, there is, the copyright levy is already there. But it has not for one day ever been implemented by the government. And this is, this, this is a structure that is designed to collect income from the person who is exploiting the consumers and ultimately distribute back to the rights owners. Mm -hmm. You see this in different countries, even within Africa, have earned so much, so many millions and billions of dollars just from collecting that copyright levy. Mm -hmm. And this is a very sustainable source of income for the film industry, not just the film industry, anybody in the creative industry yeah. benefits from the implementation of this copyright levy, which is yet to be done for years. The mm -hmm. copyright levy regulation was passed Correct me, I think as far back as 2007, and it has not been put into action. Hmm. And yet they are passing this new, you know, regulation that, that is just confusing. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I like the fact that uh, we're talking about this. And uh, looking at uh, the situation on ground, what other alternative kind of uh, taxes would you have preferred uh, this being, uh, being implemented, aside this one? Because if this is this caused a lot of conversations from the uh, creative industry, and uh, if they were to you know create uh, another system of taxing, which other alternative would you be uh, would you uh, would um, um, give as an as, as an advice? What other ways would you think they can you know make it work if they the need thing I would to say put it is out that there? The conversation that we should always be having about this sector is about what can we do. To improve create it. an enabling mm. environment for this sector to reach its potential as a key economic driver, particularly in terms of employment of labor and contribution to the GDP. Mm -hmm. So that is the point of view that regulation should always look at. Now, if you're trying to capture that tax, I always say regulation should, the, the new and modern and most effective style of regulation is incentive-based regulation. Hmm. And there are steps that you are supposed to take when, you even, when you're trying to create a regulation. And one of those steps is consultation with the people who are actually doing the business. You should consult with them to understand the landscape, which mm -hmm. you can see from the, 
from the few minutes we've discussed, you know, there's so there, this thing that they're trying to do, there's already something in the law that yeah. just simply needs to be implemented. Mm -hmm. And a simple, appropriate consultation would have released this. Now, how do we now, is, the conversation should be how do we incentivize this sector mm -hmm. to comply with tax regulations, just as we're trying to do in all other industries and sectors in the country? Mm -hmm. How do we capture people who are within the tax bracket? And I have to say, it's in the interest of the industry for this to happen, because some of us in the industry are trying to push for things such as tax rebates. A tax rebate is where you get sort of like a tax refund, um, like if you, for instance, like you see this in a lot of countries, yeah. if you, let's say you want, you want to, produce, um, for example, there are some countries that are able to attract a lot of production to their country mm -hmm. because they have good tax incentives, mm -hmm. which means that when they, pro when they shoot their production in those countries, they, they essentially spend less money because they get quite a bit of that money back as tax. Back, yes. And they're usually um, incentives like for you to be able to access that, um, it can only be accessed by a producer in that country, which means that, let's say, it's an international country mm -hmm. that wants to produce in that country, they would have to engage with a local producer. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you would need to use a certain number of, of, of people from that country in, your, in, in, key, in key roles in your production, your production and like yeah. that. Yes. So, so this industry needs to be captured in the tax bracket for us to start having real discussions about how do we um, get tax, in, um, tax incentives so that we can... Um, you know, have more cash um, to produce um, content or, um, in, within, within Nigeria and also attract foreign production into Nigeria, which again would be good for the system um, because the flow of foreign uh, of money into the country, Nigerians would be employed and paid, mm -hmm. and, and the amount of money they would spend on things like hotels, food, and the rest. I mean, I think the trickle down effect, the economics of that is very clear. Mm -hmm. But the the, the point of view of the government must always be, but if, if you look at it by saying how do we create an enabling environment, and you go through proper steps in formulating regulation, which includes consultation with stakeholders, mm -hmm. then we would arrive at something that works for everybody, you know, works for government and works for the um, creative industries, in this case, particularly the film and television industry. Great stuff. Now, you spoke about local inclusion in production, and I believe that uh, in some conversations, the government also says that uh, they've, they've said that this has also been in, in the works. It's not, uh, they make sure that they have local inclusion in production for international uh, companies who come to produce in Nigeria. So that, is, that, is, is that not in the works? Well, I mean, it's not just to put language and say there must be local content. You have to incentivize those productions to come to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Already, Nigeria loses so much foreign production to a lot of other countries in Africa, like South Africa and Morocco and Tunisia, who have tax rebates, have a huge, um, you know, skilled ta uh, uh, skilled force, mm -hmm. um, quote and unquote, as safer. And I'm, I'm putting that in air quotes because there's also the public relations. You know, the, what, is, what is safe? You know, I, I feel safe in Lagos, but when you read about Nigeria abroad, it sounds like this very scary place. But it's mm -hmm. the job of the government to clean up our public image, which ironically, this is a sector that can help to do that. And yet, they are trying to overregulate and suffocate this sector from even being able to function mm. so that they can actually do this, you know, PR through their production for the government. So it's not as simple as saying there should be local content. You have to create an enabling environment. You have to have tax incentives. It needs to be cheaper to cheap it, uh, shoot to your country. Mm -hmm. Your country should have equipment. Your country should have skilled um, crew and talent. You know, we already have talented people, so we don't even talk about talent. We have mm -hmm. talent. But skilled crew, mm -hmm. people who know how to be gaffers, grips, cinematographers, yeah. enough of them so you can be running high-quality production in multiple places, you know, at the same time within the country. So we need to invest in upskilling. We need to put in tax incentives, which means that we need to capture really the market mm -hmm. in a real sense, you know. And then we need to work on, on now 
doing a lot of public relations for people to know that Nigeria is open for filming, yeah. which involves going to film festivals, making sh sponsoring and funding Nigerian films that go to film festivals and do very well. I was so proud this year before, before COVID, I was at the Berlin International Film Festival, which mm -hmm. is one of the most prestigious festivals in the world. Yeah. And we had a Nigerian film shot in Nigeria, story written and directed by Nigerians, cast with Nigerians, both mm. um, Nigerians based in Nigeria and Nigerians abroad. But I would say it, it, it was a major, majorly, you know, Nigerian production funded locally. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the official selections of, of, that, of that festival. And people in Nigeria don't even know about this film. Yeah. You know, the Nigerian government did not support that film. There wasn't a Nigerian government stand that was active promoting this film. Hmm. Because the only way you can even show that your country is open for business is by the products that are coming out of that country. So yes. when it comes to the agencies, the, like the Nigerian um, Film Corporation, which really shouldn't be a corporation but a commission, mm -hmm. you know, we have so much work to do. And they are not doing what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And then they turn around and say they want to tax when there's already even a system that is built in to tax the person that should be taxed, quote and unquote, mm -hmm. which is the consumers and not the producers. They have already lost money. Hmm. They don't need any more money taken from them. Interesting. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ishoma, for this uh, very, very good analysis on this situation. And uh, we're hoping that a lot of uh, producers out there or content creators were able to get uh, the necessary information uh, needed regarding this. And thank you for your time. And uh, we apologize for the situation, the technical situation on connection. But you know how it is. This is the new normal for us right now. Yeah. And I hope you have a lovely day ahead of you. Thank you so much for having me and have a great week ahead of you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, we just finished a conversation with uh, Ishioma. She's a legal practitioner. We're talking about content tax for all you content creators and uh, producers. I'm sure you were enlightened by that information that we brought to you.